waiting for a gentleman to sit down. Uh, I think I'm sure you would have seen that uh, at the back of the hall, we have a separate dedicated table where we have books and publications made by the CET, Center for Education and Training, part of IAF. Uh, we have the books and uh, what all is available at the back. So when you get time, you can just go ahead and uh, see the same. You will have the pricing and everything. You can place orders here, take the books or whatever is available. So, And for more clarification, you can get in touch with Mr. Dayala. So welcome back, uh, gentlemen. So to introduce our uh, next speaker for the day, we request Mr. Rajmohan Madhyaragan, Joint Secretary, IAF Chennai Chapter, to introduce our speaker, Mr. A. Balaji, General, Ma General Manager, Project and Utilities, Breaks India, Private Limited, to our esteemed audience. It gives me immense pleasure to introduce Mr. A. Balaji. Mr. A. Balaji, an electrical and electronics engineer by profession, serving Breaks India Private Limited Foundry Division for more than three decades and has taken various roles and responsibilities, uh, responsibilities during his tenure. Presently managing projects and utilities function, energy management systems and green manufacturing requirements, sustainability initiative across all the foundry divisions. Liaising with government authorities to meet the sta statutory, statutory requirements and so on. He is a certified auditor for quality management systems for IATF 16949, environmental management system ISO 14001-2015 and energy managing system ISO 5001-2018 standard. He is also shouldering the responsibility of management representative for ENMS for past 10 years. His hobbies include listening to music and watching movies. Now we call upon Mr. A. Balaji to address the gathering. Thank you. Okay. Good morning to all. On behalf of Breaks India, I thank IAF Chennai team for the wonderful opportunity to present our case studies on energy conservation and efficiency improvement at our foundry division. This is the agenda. I am going to brief you how we had implemented ISO 50001-2018 standard requirements in our foundry. Also, what are the energy conservation initiatives, energy efficiency initiatives we have implemented at our foundry division in the upcoming slides I am going to present you. This is our vision, which mainly emphasizes on we shall conduct ourselves as a responsible corporate citizen known for integrity and ethics. This is our energy policy which derived based on the ISO 50001-2018 class 5.2 requirements. This is one of the objectives taken by our top management, especially on the renewable energy front. This year we have targeted 49% of energy from renewable energy share of our total energy consumption. Also, we are focusing how to conserve resources on energy front. These are all the 10 steps I'm going to explain how we had implemented this ISO 50001. 2018 in our found reduction. First, we have done inventory session. That is, we have list all our energy related activities, goods and service. Then we identified the corresponding equipment, which is relevant to the identified uh, listed activities. Also, what type of energy we have used in this process. In this case, we identified one of the example here I am going to present this melting process. From the melting process, we are using two kinds of energy, electrical energy and thermal energy. Electrical energy being used for the induction furnace, thermal energy being used for the heating applications. Then based on the past and present energy consumption, uh, with the baseline, we have set the target and also we identified what are the opportunities available to evaluate the significant energy use. So in our case, we have identified 80% energy contributing equipment across the line, like uh, melting, welding, and axillary equipments. So uh, in the axillary equipments, we identified one of the equipment is air compressor, another one is the molding line, we have identified diesel cool drum, then mixer. Upon identifying the significant energy use, we should uh, evaluate what are the significant static and variable factor which influence energy consumption. Static factor, what I mean here is, which is not routinely changed, but it has got influence in energy consumption. In this case, the example is the capacity of the furnace. However, the variable factor which routinely change, the example is the liquid metal temperature. 
which has got influence in energy consumption and which is routinely changed. Once we identify the static and variable factor, we have to develop a work instruction and you have to set the target range to control the parameter against the set targeted value to achieve the energy performance. Then uh, to improve further, we can also take objective and target because in, if you take in a melting, eh, you can able to control the temperature, temperature of the liquid metal either manual or through automation. In our case, we have introduced weight versus power management system. So we can able to achieve the desired results of specific energy consumption in melting. Also, once you set the target, you have to monitor the daily energy consumption on daily basis. And if you found any deviation against the set target, you have to do YY analysis and you have to take suitable corrective action to bring it the desired set target. So in our case, we have set 3% target. Also, you have to calibrate all the measuring, monitoring equipments which you are using for variable parameters for all significant energy use to validate the energy performance. Then we also provide training through our core group members for our supervisor training. Based on the training, we also collect suggestions and we evaluate all the suggestions provided by the, implement, by the people and we implement them to motivate them. We also displayed energy scorecard in the shop floor to motivate the people. During the planning stage, you also identify risk and opportunities, which this new standard calls for risk and opportunity assessment. You have to do it, and you have to take suitable countermeasure to mitigate the risk in order to achieve the energy performance. In our case, we have implemented electrical energy meters even for 1% of energy consumption equipment of total energy consumption. Similarly, in our, uh, for thermal energy, we have installed uh, flow meters for fuel monitoring as well as the weighing indicator for co-consumption, which is, uh, we have installed for 2% contributing equipment. These are the various initiatives we have taken melting, because in foundry melting is a 80% contribute equipment. So what we done earlier, we used lander for transferring the liquid metal from melting to holding. We found uh, there was a huge temperature loss in the lander. Because of the opening also, we found difficult in maintenance of lining. So that has been upgraded with a 15 ton crane with 7 ton ladle. So we found there is a reduction of 5 units per ton of metallic. Similarly, earlier we have bigger size of renderizer, we found difficult in charging. Also, because of the air gap, we found the cycle time is increased and the energy also get wasted. So what we done, we have done short blast returns. We introduced heavy duty snap cutting, wedge cutting machine on the output of desecule drum. And then it has short blasted. We'll get 100% small returns, which is being used for melting application. So there will be a reduction of two units per ton of metallic. We also done lining through manual poking system, then we have done through a pneumatic mechanism. That has been now upgraded with the electrical energy operated vibrator motoring system, also with a predetermined timer mechanism. So we found it, it improved the lining compaction as well as the inner diameter increases. So which warrants more amount of liquid metal. So more than the rated, we can able to achieve another 0.5 ton of metal. So which indirectly reduce the energy consumption. Similarly, earlier we have a manual operator power management system for melting system. Now it has been upgraded with the weight versus power management system. What I mean here is based on the charging material, it will calculate what is the theoretical energy required for melting the metal. Then based on the weighing measurement and the actual charging feedback, the power will get automatically controlled. So we can able to achieve the desired results and we have reduced nine units per ton of metal through these operations. Then earlier we have a 60 ton holding furnace. Actually earlier we don't have 
more number of great changes. Now to make the great changes frequently and also we can we have huge energy loss because of uh, about 30 percent of the capacity of holding metal being utilized in the weekend or on, on 60 ton holding for us. So that we want to eliminate. So we introduce the 22 ton furnace, induction type furnace, we can able to save 15 units for ton metal. But this is applicable only for where you have more number of great change. Also to eliminate the weekend energy saving. We also introduce in one of the vertical molding line from single pouring to double pouring where we have more pouring time. I mean, if the pouring time is more than 15 seconds, we have a loss of machine. We, we, can, we want to match the machine cycle taken with the pouring time. So we introduced double pouring, which resulted in two units for a ton of metallics in the holding system. Because continuously we are withdrawing the metal from the holding. We also create awareness to our employees on energy management system requirements for the respective operations on significant energy use. And based on the training, we collect suggestions from the employee. We will motivate them based on the suggestion which they provided we will implement. And also we encourage them to participate in the competition outside the organization. This is one of the initiatives which we have done on fixed energy cost reduction. Earlier we used to have, a, for power factor improvement only, we have installed capacitor in the LD system. Now we also introduce ST harmonic filter in the melting furnace system in order to power, improve the power factor from 0 0.95 to 99. In one of the locations at Andhra Pradesh, we found a, the building was in KVH, reactive power, instead of KWH. We found there is a, a significant saving, about uh, 183,647 units we have saved and resulting in 1,568 ton of CO2 per annum we have saved because of this ST harmonic filter installation. And we have installed this ST harmonic filter based on the furnace. So for each furnace is having each system. So based on the furnace operation, you can decide the harmonic filter installation. And these are all the various initiatives which we have done, both holding and auxiliary equipments. For example, earlier we used to have SCR fire controlled holding system, power management system. Now it has been upgraded with integrated bipolar transistor technology for the holding for us. And we have saved about 8% reduction compared to our earlier consumption. Similarly, we upgrade all our conventional mercury vapor light with the LED lamp. There is a reduction of 50% on the original consumption. Also, we are replaced in our disamolting machine. We are earlier we used compressor energy operated vacuum pump that has been replaced with energy electrical energy operated vacuum pump, resulting in 10% reduction. We also introduced optimum power share controller at the incomer to reduce the fixed cost. Especially, we found uh, against the sanction demand only 70% we are using. So, what we done uh, based on the real time demand. We have controlled uh, the significant energy equipment of melting so with the real-time data feedback from the controller. And uh, we, we have controlled every two seconds to get feedback from the maximum demand control. It will control the melting system, resulting in 20% reduction of the fixed demand cost. This is one of the significant savings we have done on the fixed energy cost. Also, we found that there will be reduction in energy consumption melting also. Also, we replaced old screw compressor with uh, energy efficient variable frequency drive compressors to minimize the energy consumption, resulting in 10% reduction. We have introduced variable frequency drive for our fume extraction system as well as the mixer. Normally, in charging, uh, melting, and holding furnace, there are three positions one charging, another is melting, third is tapping. If you take holding also, you'll have holding, tapping, and uh, charging of the metal. So what we done, based on the position feedback of the fume extraction wood, we control the speed of the blower. Normally, charge, during charging, it demands more RPM. During melting, it demands less RPM, because you have to maintain the wood temperature well within the limit. So we introduced this variable frequency drive. 
which resulted in 10 percent reduction. Similarly, we also, same kind of thing we have done for the mixer. We found uh, in the TM series mixer, the blender motor during dry cycle time, it consumes only less energy. And similarly, in the, during the wet mixing, uh, it demands only the torque. We found based on the real time feedback, current, we uh, change the RPM. We found there is a significant reduction in the mixer. We also replaced conventional water pump with the energy efficient water pump, especially the melting and holding application, which is being operated around the clock, 24 to 7. Also, we introduced electrical energy operated a vibrant uh, pneumatic. We have replaced the existing pneumatic mechanism, which is being used for Tandy sliding lining breakage with the electrical energy operated system. There is a reduction of 5%. Also, periodically we used to conduct an air audit on the, across the foundry. The one of the earlier we used to have ultrasonic big detector, which can able to tell you only the leakage part. But we outsource one of the source supply service provider, which is having an acoustic camera system. It will deliver three results. How much CFM is get wasted, what is the energy is being wasted, and what is the cost. So you can able to take a decision. In this case, uh, we have identified about uh, 97 locations. We found there was an air leakage in one of the unit, and we category into three, high priority, medium priority, and low priority. And uh, we have taken suitable corrective action to prevent uh, the recurrence. We can able to achieve with this improvement uh, about 130 CFM and 1,53,432 units per annum we have saved. This is also one of the various initiatives on the renewable energy front. Especially our customer, nowadays they are demanding you have to reduce the product carbon footprint. So we have, we have aimed this year about 49% of total energy consumption from the renewable energy share. We want to increase the new source, hybrid source like wind and solar. Also we want to add Bagasi power source. And the next year we increased another 10% from the current year. Also. 15% by 25 to 26. This is what our plan. So we want to reduce our scope to emissions, which is significantly contributing of product carbon footprint. To avoid our fossil fuel consumption, which is predominantly using for our heating application, we used municipal solid plastic waste into pyrol plant. And for this operation of pyrol plant, uh, they are using only the pyrol as a fuel. Similarly, the, the gas which is generated from the pyro gas process being used for preparing this uh, distilled pyro oil. Also, the waste which is generated from the process, the carbon black powder being used at cement industries. This is one of the initiatives which were recently done. From this, we can able to achieve about 1,500 tons per year of emission reduction. We also eliminated fossil fuel in one of the treatment lateral application by converting from fossil fuel to electrical energy operated. Also, we upgraded our existing fossil fuel vehicle with the electrical energy operated vehicle. And we also identified the old vehicle. Uh, we found there was a huge energy loss during transport of casting dispatch. So we upgraded the vehicle with BS6 vehicles. This is the one, one of the new process. Recently, we had a trial. Except petrol, any kind of fossil fuel, you can do this emulsification process. What I mean here is, um, in the traditional fuel, we love, we don't have a secondary automation. What I mean is, once uh, we actually, the, the equipment as well as the oil is get patented. This additive is made of vegetable grade oil and they are mixing with the equipment. They are adding 15% of water along with the existing uh, diesel fuel and they mixed with the stirrer and they, it will mix for about uh, 30 to 40 minutes. It will produce emulsification oil. The agent, the additive is used as an agent for binding between the oil and the water and it, it coats on the water particles. Once the water particle enters the hot chamber, that creates a secondary automation and uh, it will create a nanoparticles of fuel. So we found less smoke 
also the environmental uh, NOx was reduced significantly. So this we have recently conducted trial. But one of the challenges here is uh, you should use this oil only for where you can use continuously use like annealing for us. If you want to use for ladder heating or other application, you should, uh, because after uh, three hours, uh, if you keep this oil an ideal, it will get settled. You have, it warrants again mixing. That's the challenge we have faced. But it is good for where you have continuous operation for heating application. Thank you. Very good presentation. Yes, uh, in the last slide, what you mentioned, SOX SOX uh, levels. Yes, sir. That you said you are not able to meet when compared to no, no, permittable no. limit. Yeah, actually, I am presenting one of the for furnace oil. I am comparing with yeah. uh, the treated oil, emulsification oil. We found that the SOX NOX is level is reduced, and it was well within the prescribed dumps of the government. Uh, what you mentioned is, or just can go to the previous slide, some 100 you mentioned, PPO. Yeah, yeah, the, we have Permis mentioned about the permissible limit, eh? ah. and uh, what is the traditional fuel on the furnace oil, and I am comparing with the emulsification oil. The last one is the emulsification oil process. Ah, that I understood. Ah. Again, 100 you have got 1504. Permissible, permissible limit is 100. Yeah. And 100 you got. 15.04. That was my question. Maybe as again. Second 1557. They got 15. That I understood. Untreated furnace oil. But uh, okay, okay, sir. Yeah. I think uh, the value would have found Maybe again. something. We got the lab results, eh, which we found that it was okay. well within the limit. Oh. Thank you. Yeah. Any, Any further questions, questions gentlemen? Base more smoke, but uh, as frequently the smoking nasal. It will possible to use. Yeah, we also faced uh, during the initial trial. Okay. What we done is uh, we have made a distillation process. Oh. After producing the fire oil, uh. it will go once again the distillation process. So the existing fire oil it get heated up with the same. Fire oil, okay, and uh, it will produce again fire gas that get condensation on the uh, we uh, make condensation process, so we will get distilled fire oil. Okay, okay. It is as good as uh, like uh, diesel petrol. Wow. Yeah. Normally, uh, the fire oil supplier uh, they produce low cost based on the cost uh, they will simplify the process. Yes, sir. There are three or four stages are there. Suppose if you make within uh, first stage, you will get uh, like crude oil. That will not be good, and you will, as you rightly pointed out, uh, you will get more smoke, and mm. it will get smell and all. Yeah. So, but we have introduced uh, a digital pyral system. Okay, okay, sir. Any more questions? Oh. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, you fix the energy. Sir? You, you fix the energy. How much energy will be fed into the furnace for the melting of the metal? Normally, actually, since we have got various grade, uh, we are able to achieve on an average about 5-6 units. Uh, the best we achieved is about 535 units uh, okay. per ton of metallic. Uh, the challenge is if you avoid uh, the number of uh, tool change and if you avoid uh, the other delays, uh, definitely you can able to achieve 535 units. Uh. Yes, sir. My Normally, you should uh, benchmark uh, with, uh, which is uh, provided by the manager. Yes, uh, within the brakes, there are yeah. uh, more units yes, can yes, benchmark sir. within the yes. brakes in the itself. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, my question is how you are controlling the input energy to the furnace uh, through energy manager? Uh, whether you, what is the feedback you are taking from the furnace, whether the temperature or uh, yeah. what you are taking? We have not done uh, through the energy management system. Okay. We have purchased as a dedicated PLC system. It okay. will collect the feedback from the weighing, weighment okay. of the furnace. So, based on the charging material, weighing will provide a feedback. Then, uh, for each material, we have a theoretical energy, how much energy is required uh, from ambient to the liquid metal temperature. So, they set the target for each raw material. We also enter what all the char charge material we are providing to the system. Then, it will calculate theoretical energy. Based okay. on the theoretical energy and the weight, uh, it will deliver the power through PLC system. Once it reaches the liquid metal temperature, it will automatically go to the holding mode. So it is unmanned operation, so that we can able to achieve the desired results of energy. 
good sir actually in the mixer but uh, uh, as i told told earlier uh, like opsc you should work for the uh, process based approach system is not depend on manual similarly yeah, yeah. we also done uh, for our tandi system what we done we are taking a measurement continuous measurement from the tandis and we automatically control the holding power if we put it to uh, the control for the okay, people sir. no yeah there will sometimes they will superate correct great sir yeah, mm. i have one learning today we have done for the mixer mm. we have already we have done solve for the rotor also we can yeah, thanks sure. for the light thank you yeah based on the current as you said uh, it will control yeah. this way thank you for each equipment uh, you need this kind of automation so that uh, you can able to achieve the desired results thank you sir for showcasing your innovations on energy conservation and efficiency initiatives taken to achieve the same in your foundry with a systematic approach which is a need of the hour we extend a request to our chennai chapter honorary secretary mr p sindil kumar to felicitate mr balaji with a traditional angavastram we invite mr s v ranganathan past chairman of chennai chapter and md of svpl to present a memento to our esteemed speaker sandeep sir please do join sir